Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spohr and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to have some fun with stenciling and glitter hero paste featuring lots of cards featuring brand new products from the Hero Arts Spring 2022 catalog release. Oh my goodness, you guys, I have all the spring vibes and feels. I could not stop at just a couple cards and instead created six pretty cards. They're all different to share with you, although they do all feature a lot of the same backgrounds or at least some sort of the glitter hero paste incorporated in all of them. We're going to start with one of my favorite new stencils from the release. This is the Flower Circle Stencil. It's a six by six stencil. I am going to tape it to the back of a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half inch cardstock temporarily to hold this down in place while I do a little ink blending. So we're going to use the Heroes Hues Reactive Ink Cubes to apply these inks to our background first. So I'm using a little Key Lime Fizz and then we'll use Green Apple for the greenery. It's more of an idea. It doesn't have to be super precise. Um, at least I didn't do it that way. If you wanna maybe use a smaller blending brush, you could probably get into some little bits and areas a little bit better. But I was going more for the general feel. So we're going to stencil this once on smooth white cardstock and then again on Hero Arts Pebble cardstock. So that's kind of my plan here today. I'm just gonna go around the perimeter of the design now with the green apple. And then we're gonna start with our colorful inks. So I am gonna do a rainbow of color. We're gonna start with taffy. And again, I'm just kind of getting that color in there into the floral area as best I can. Next up, a little fruit punch. And my goal is to repeat this pattern twice. So then we're going to do some creamsicle. This is an orange color. And I haven't used my reactive inks in a while, but if you guys have seen some of my past Hero Arts videos or other videos where I'm using the Hero Hues reactive inks, you guys already know I love them. They are um, a delightful, bright Skittles assortment of colors that are just gorgeous. There is our lemon drop. Then we're gonna do a little pool party. Our greenery for our rainbow is of course all of the leaves and things around our design and so I'm not doing green flowers. Then a little blue raspberry. And finally some thistle, which is a really pretty light purple color. Just like so. Then I'm simply going to repeat this again. You can kind of see me counting around my card, seeing if I can fit everything in one more time. I'm going to go ahead and ink up the purple while I had the thistle out, and then we'll just kind of start again with our taffy. Just get a little bit there, our fruit punch. And I'm still trying to gauge and make sure I leave room for every color. I like a little bit of overlap. Creamsicle. Oh, I think I went back to taffy. I missed an area. And then we'll do lemon drop pool party and blue raspberry again. So super pretty. And now that we've done this smooth white background, I am going to switch to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel of pebble cardstock, just to show you how the colors look on a colorful background. Granted, it's not super colorful. It's a nice kind of beigey, taupey gray but it's one of my absolute favorite background colors and the beautiful reactive inks show up so pretty on it. And I think once we add the Glitter Hero paste over the top, you guys are going to love um, how it looks on a colorful cardstock. Now that I have 
finish the white. I am going to speed up the video a little bit since this is just repetition only on the pebble cardstock. We're going to go around the perimeter again with key lime fizz and green apple before filling in with our rainbow of color. It's a little hard to see just simply with the stenciling. When I pull it off though, hopefully you'll be able to when I put the two backgrounds side by side, just see how pretty that is. Now that I've already done a background, I can also go ahead and ink up each color to get the two little rainbows there in the perimeter of my uh, flower circle done at the same time, which does speed up the process considerably. Got blue raspberry and thistle left. And just like that, we are finished. So pretty, isn't that fun? Now I did decide to go around the perimeter of each of my backgrounds with my green ink blending brush and just very, very lightly uh, ink blend over the top of the green areas. Not a ton, just a little bit with Key Lime Fizz. We're gonna do this on each background and then I will set these aside for a second while I stencil the next backgrounds, which are created with the Daisy Mosaic Stencil. This is another six by six stencil from the spring 2022 release. And we are again gonna do the same thing that we just did on the previous card where we first do a white background, and then we will do the same background on the pebble card stock. Now, instead of lots of colors, this background is really going to be comprised of lemon drop and creamsicle, and that's it. And that's going to go for both backgrounds. And while it's super pretty on its own, just you wait till we add the glitter hero paste. Oh my goodness, you guys, I totally love it. The yellow for me is just gives all the spring Easter vibes, I guess, and I really love it. So once we have all of our lemon drop, and then I accidentally moved it. Well, I didn't accidentally moved it. I wanted to check something and then had to put it back in place. I'm gonna take my creamsicle and just kind of go in the center of the daisies. Just really quick, just like so. And my post-it tape is not sticking too well. Now, it's not blended out really great with the creamsicle, so I will go back with my lemon drop or my yellow blending brush, and I'm gonna blend over the top of that to just kind of smooth it out and soften it a little bit. This will be even softer once we add the Glitter Hero paste over the top. Just like before, I'm gonna speed up the video while I do the other background. We'll just go ahead, I'm not even gonna, oh, I guess I did clean the stencil. I was kind of afraid it might bleed or maybe not make as crisp an image, so I just spritzed it with a little water and dried it with a microfiber cloth. Normally, when I'm finished with my stencils, I will wash them with a little warm water, sometimes some uh, soap if they need it. Generally, they don't. The ink usually will come right off, and then I put them in a drying rack to dry overnight for the most part, and then put them away in the morning. Now, I really love how this looks against the pebble cardstock again. Now, I'm not gonna go all the way to the edge this time. I am just gonna leave kind of a softened border all the way around. This is another four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel. Just like before, we're gonna go all over with Lemon Whip, and then we will also do a little creamsicle in the center. I'm gonna buff away some of that ink on top of the stencil and leave it in place. And we're gonna go ahead and take a palette knife and spread some of the Glitter Hero paste right over the top of the stencil. This is a really nice thick paste, I love it. I like to put a little bit down with a palette knife and then I take this uh, scraper pal and I just like to give a nice, thin, even layer all over the surface. Now, I do want you to note that because these are reactive inks, can you see how my um, glitter paste on my Scraper Pal kinda has a yellow tint to it? 
I'm going to leave that there. I am not putting that back in this container as I don't want it to contaminate the rest of the product. But I can go ahead and line up my stencil with my other background and use it on this background, especially since it's all uh, yellows as well. So definitely um, can kind of reuse it. I used as much of this as possible. I even used it on my other backgrounds where I could because it really didn't um, do anything to those. It, it worked totally fine. I just want to caution you that if you are using something like a distress ink or a reactive ink, you don't want to contaminate your container by trying to put that glitz glitter gel or glitz uh, glitter hero paste back in that jar or glitz glitter gel, whatever you're using. My other note is when you are finished with your stencils, clean them immediately. This stuff dries super fast, you guys. So you are going to want to be pretty speedy with the warm wa soap and warm water. Um, I'm just kind of wiping away my stencil mat with a microfiber cloth and cleaning my stencil just like I did before. This is just kind of a quick clean with some water and my microfiber cloth. Once I am done stenciling these backgrounds, I am going to take these to my sink and clean everything really, really well before doing anything else. At this point, I have not done my plain glitter hero paste backgrounds on white cardstock, which you'll see in a bit. I need the stencils to and the stencil pal and the palette knife all to be completely clean. Before I do that, I don't want any color at all. So we're just going to give a nice, beautiful, thin layer to the white background. And it's kind of hard to tell right here on camera while it's wet, but when it dries, it is so sparkly and good with so much texture. You guys, I love it so much. This is probably my favorite product from the spring released is this Glitter Hero Paste and then all of the amazing stencils. So I've shown you two. I actually have a couple more that I'm gonna share with you. Um, we'll be using those against the same stenciled backgrounds, but we're also going to stencil something else. Using the Tulip Bouquet stencil, I'm going to use Taffy and Fruit Punch for the first two layers. I will tell you, I thought about stamping, well, I didn't think about, I went ahead and stamped the stamp set that coordinates with this stencil set first in black, and I didn't love it. I opted to go without the outline, but you have so many options. So there's a tulip bouquet stamp set, there's the tulip bouquet stencils that you see here, and the tulip bouquet frame cuts. You guys, I absolutely love layering stencils. For anyone whose jam is not coloring, and I know I've seen a lot of you mention that coloring is not your thing, layering stencils, layering stencils, layering stencils. I'm so excited to see even more out in the market right now because I think they are phenomenal. So we're gonna take Key Lime Fizz and Green Apple again for the two layering pieces for these tulips. Now, how pretty would these be in yellow as well? So definitely keep that in mind. Um, four stencils in this set, two for the tulips, two for the greenery. So there is the first one for the greenery. We're gonna line, and they line up so easy, you guys. I just love it. And then our green apple layer just like so. So there is our first bunch of flowers. I'll set that aside and we're going to work on our second group of flowers that comes with a layering stencil or if you can get the layering stencil I should say. Flowers in vase. So this set has stamp set, stencils, and the die that coordinates with the florals in the vase. Again, I am going to use just the stencils not and the die, not the stamp set for the vase, but you can definitely do that if you'd like. I'm gonna ink up the vase with Pool Party and Blue Raspberry. 
and then you can see that three flowers or par portions of the flowers are going to be stenciled with this stencil as well. So we're going to use Lemon Whip, Taffy, and Thistle for the flowers in this design. And there's quite a bit of layering going on with the rest of the stencils, so you will see that here as we add more. And I'm just trying my best to keep the color within each um, of the flowers. You can mask them off if you want a little more control. I didn't, but you definitely could. And then we're gonna move that stencil out of the way. Already, all the colors make me so, so happy. Then there's a pretty little scallop around that big yellow flower we just did, plus a whole bunch of other flowers. So we're going to start, and I'm just checking all my stencils here. Let's go ahead and start with our creamsicle orange. And we're going to do this flower and also the scallop around the large flower. even though I didn't do it right now. Then we're gonna do taffy for the flower that looks like the other one we just stenciled with the last stencil. And back to creamsicle. And then a little bit, I decided to go with another color. So I pulled out a kind of pinky, purple, magenta color. And of course I cannot think of it right off the top of my head. Let me grab it. Berry smoothie. And we're gonna grab our next stencil. Let's go ahead and start with our fruit punch, which is going to be the layering over our pink flower and our layering over our orange creamsicle flower. We're going to use creamsicle over the yellow flower, thistle for the small flowers. and grape slush for the layering on our final flower. I know I did, I started with yellow and I was like, oh, what are you doing? Don't do that. Uh, so <laughs> we're just gonna cover that whole thing up with grape slush. Just like so, perfect. Oh my goodness. Our final stencil is going to be greenery plus a couple more little purple flowers. So we're going to get this lined up and ink it up with Key Lime Fizz, Green Apple, and of course, Thistle. Three little flowers there. And then all of the great little greenery. Once I have all of the stenciling done, this was kind of the tricky part. So it's going to involve a little dry time. If you wanna do um, the Glitter Hero Paste in several areas on these, since it isn't all one stencil, I did a good chunk of it and set it aside and let it dry while I assembled some cards. And then I came back and did more because it does dry fairly quickly. And that way I was able to apply some of the Glitter Hero paste to multiple areas. We're gonna start with the greenery for the tulips, or that tulip bouquet. And I'm gonna lay down some glitter paste with my palette knife and scrape that with my scraper, stencil scraper. And then, like I said, I'm gonna set that aside to dry and it's going to make the dark areas um, glittery and it's so pretty. Just add some nice definition. Same thing with our flowers in vase. Let's just kind of clean up our stencil. 
Um, I'm not going to use the tulips quite yet. We'll set, I cleaned it. I'll set it aside for a minute. Let's go ahead and buff off some of this ink off of our flowers in vase stencil. And we're going to use the first stencil, the one with the vase and the large flowers. I'm going to use the Glitz Glitter Gel that's already on here. I'm going to remove some of the color ink I don't want to transfer. And then I just use the rest. And then I'm going to set this aside to dry for a few minutes as well. Once completely dry, I think I waited about 20 minutes, I came back and I am going to apply the rest of the um, glitter paste. That's a little bit more than I actually needed. I can use it on the other card though. So now I have a little glitter on both the top of the tulips and the greenery. We'll set that aside to completely dry while we grab another stencil for the flowers and base. Now I messed around with this for a bit, but I finally settled on this stencil. I'm going to try to avoid the middle large yellow flower because it already has some glitter uh, paste on it and I don't feel like it needs more and I just want it to be on some of these other flowers And there you go, I'm going to set that aside to completely dry and I am going to take everything and wash it with soap and water I am going to discard the rest of the Glitter hero paste I did not use as it has a bit of tint to it Or you could also put it in a little airtight container and save it for another project if you want to use some uh, Next that, up we're going to be coloring time. the looking glass bees and flowers I die, die cut these from white cardstock as well as my go-to hero arts square infinity dies I was able to die cut a bunch of squares this way or and I'm going to layer these together. I love customizing these with a little bit of Copic marker coloring. You can see I am coloring in the sunflowers first. All of the marker colors I'm using are listed down below the video here on YouTube, as well as over on my blog. So definitely check that out if you're interested at any time exactly what colors I'm using today. I believe I'm using YR 24, 23, and 31 for the sunflowers with E49, 47, and 44 for the center of the sunflower. Next up, we have our bumblebee. We're going to use YR 31 and 23 for the yellow parts of the bumblebee. Some warm grays in warm gray four, and I believe seven, six or seven, for the grayish black parts of the bumblebee. And BG 90 and 92 for the iridescent looking wings. Oh my goodness, I'm loving it already. Sunflowers and bumblebees, you guys. What is it about them that I love so much? YG 21, 23, and 17 for the greenery. YG 21 is pretty limey, but I love it for the light green part. I'm going to feather in YG17, then YG23, right over YG21 without going too crazy with the blending. And there is the looking glass, bees, and flowers. Oh my goodness, my fave. We're going to adhere this to one of the backgrounds. I decided I like it on the pebble background better. Um, we'll come back to that in just a bit. I am going to go ahead and stamp one of my favorite stamps from the uh, spring release. It's a wood block stamp called Painting Easel. I love this. We're actually going to combine it with some other fun images to create a really cute little scene card. I stamped it on smooth white cardstock. I know I'm showing it in the misty. I stamped it while it was in the misty with the wood block stamp. I did not use the misty to stamp it. I do want to clarify that because I think it might be a little confusing. 
We're going to color in the easel wood with E40, 344, and 47. Make sure and do good blending. So I'm actually gonna pair this little easel with the adorable little color layering duckling. I'm really excited. This was my first idea when I opened up the box of the spring release goodies. Actually, I, you guys, if you saw the pile of stuff, I'm like, ooh, I wanna use this. Ooh, I wanna use this literally so many things. So I'm probably going to be putting up a poll soon, um, kind of asking you guys what you want to see next, kind of like I did with BB's Butterflies, um, which I'm still kind of letting that poll run for probably another day. And then whatever wins will be showcased in Friday's Live. We'll try to do something similar with, with the Hero Arts goodies. And then I'm using Y08 and 19 to color in the canvas on the easel because I feel like these yellows are going to match my deck perfect. We're going to stamp some sentiments right on here. I'm going to use the rabbit hole designs powder tool that I totally love. And then I'm combining sentiments from the um, tulip bouquet as well as the um, color layering duckling set. I'm going to stamp those right there on that canvas on the east easel using embossing and watermark ink from Hero Arts, my favorite embossing powder, and heat emboss with white. Now for the duckling, I stamped the duckling on some smooth white cardstock. I just have some leftover scraps here with the Butter Bar Hero Arts ink. This is kind of one of my all-time favorite yellow dye inks. I am going to stamp it twice to get a good stamped impression. I will also tell you, you'll notice that my stamps already have some staining. It's because I thought I had recorded myself stamping uh, the duckling, and I did not, so I actually had to go back and redo this part, but that's totally okay because now I have another duckling ready to go for another card. So this is one of my very favorite sets from the spring catalog release. For the layering, the next layering for the duckling, I'm using Just Rust dye ink from Hero Arts. I'm going to stamp this twice as well. Keep in mind with dye inks as the dye ink dries, it will fade just a bit. And finally, the last layering piece for the duckling. I'm going to stamp the majority of this with Cup of Joe Hero Arts dye ink. I'm going to try to avoid the eye though. And then I will ink up the eye with black Hero Arts ink and the black really pops against the rest of the image. Look at that. Perfect. Oh my gosh, you guys, I absolutely love this image. Doesn't he look so soft and fluffy? For the rest of the images for this card, I did stamp the grass piece from the color layering duckling with Key Lime Fizz and Green Apple Hero Hues inks. I'm gonna combine those. I'll stamp it a couple times to get a good stamped impression. And that gives it a little more depth and dimension. I do want to note there is not a coordinating die for the grass. And you might be wondering how I die cut that for my card. I actually used the Brother Scan and Cut to cut the grass and to cut the easel because that wood mount stamp does not have a coordinating die. But I did cut the duckling and the cattail, which I'm stamping here with root beer and uh, green apple Hero Hues inks with the coordinating dies, especially the duckling because the die cuts out in between its legs, which the brother scan and cut would not do. However, I really wanted everything to be die cut on my card. So I'm going to play around with the elements until I get it just how I want and will adhere everything to this other daisy background. Now I am using 
a tape runner to adhere everything to my card uh, to begin with. <laughs> but remember that that glitter paste is kind of textury. It's a little hard to get things to stick. I would highly recommend a liquid adhesive um, when you have everything where you want. So you'll notice I'll take liquid adhesive and kind of add it in a few places once I have all of my grass and the easel exactly where they're going to go. The duckling was adhered with foam adhesive squares to pop him up a little bit. I love how it looks like he's just standing out here in the grass in front of his little easel signpost. Um, the cattails will be tucked in between. I did do two borders for the grass. Um, I felt like that just worked better. You can see how everything is moving because the tape runner, even though I'm using a strong tape runner, it is not going to stick to that glitz uh, paste at all. Liquid adhesive is definitely the way to go. I'm going to tack that down in a few places and I'll use some reverse tweezers to hold it in place while the glue dries. Next, I did use a square infinity die to die cut a square in my other background where we're going to add the sunflower images and that's because I think it's going to look a little bit nicer. I am going to be using another brand new die with the awesome uh, looking glass bees here and this die is like an ornate frame. There's a couple of ornate frames that work with the, any of the looking glass sets. This is the looking glass ornate frame. This one actually is called ornate. I die cut it from the Hero Arts Pebble cardstock. We're going to adhere it directly to the front of our glitter paste panel. And then I'm going to flip the panel over and I'm going to adhere my looking glass sunflower and bees behind this. So starting with the bee layer, just like so, see how it hides the frame. And then I can pop this whole panel up on my card base with foam adhesive to kind of disguise the fact that we're going to have three layers of cardstock back behind this panel. But I do think it makes it just look a little bit nicer on the front, which you'll see when I flip it over. So we're going to simply layer them. Oh, and look how pretty that is. Is that not gorgeous? I am going to layer this over my card base. I'm not going to place anything behind it. I like the white because I think it's going to make the sunflowers pop. And then I did stamp and emboss some sentiments from the B stamp set. And let me remember the name of that one exactly for you guys. It is the B Leaf stamp set and I stamped that on some Hero Arts vellum with embossing and watermark ink, heat embossed with white embossing powder, and wrapped the vellum around my panel before securing it to my card base. So here's my reverse tweezer hack that I was talking about. I'm going to just move my tweezers to another area to hold down something else on my card. <laughs> And next, I am going to stamp the color layering Happy Birthday on some pebble cardstock using Taffy, Fruit Punch, Key Lime Fizz, and Pool Party Hero Hues inks. And then we're going to stamp the layering part of the greeting with VersaFine Onyx Black ink, which is really going to make it pop. Then we're going to die cut the whole shape with a Circle Infinity die from Hero Arts. And it's just going to be the perfect accent in the center of our pebble um, floral wreath background. A misty is so handy for this because you can stamp your images more than once so easily. And you can see that I'm layering those inks for both words. I love how that black, after you have inked it up with the colorful ink, just makes them pop. You can do this in any color. There's some additional words you can use with this as well, but I left mine simple and just used the happy birthday. Then of course die cut it with a circle infinity die, and we're going to pop it up in the center of our um, pebble background, as I mentioned, using foam adhesive. And that's it. Super, super easy. except I got a little post-it tape on there that I had to get off. And I love how this looks. It's the perfect little accent and greeting for our card. We're 
we're going to just glue that to a white top fold card base and that card is finished for the white card base with the floral circle there we are going to use an assortment of greetings from the awesome let's celebrate stamp set if you make a lot of birthday cards like I make a lot of birthday cards, you are going to love this stamp set. I am simply going to combine different greetings from this right in the center using the same Hero Hughes inks. We're going to use Taffy, Fruit Punch, um, Cream Sickle, pardon me, Key Lime Fizz, and Pool Party. So another very simple finish to this card. Um, I'm simply just going to line those up and stamp those in the center once I figure out exactly what I'm going to use. For my card, I'm taking my favorite little heart accents and we're going to create a beautiful little rainbow in that white space right underneath, pulling colors from all of the Hero Hues reactive inks that we used for both the border and the greeting. If you've been here a while, you know how much I love my little heart accents. Oh my goodness, how perfect is that? We'll pop this panel on a white top fold card base and it is ready to be sent. So happy and so fun. Okay, we have our final two cards. And for those, we're gonna go back to our stencils that we used at the beginning. And I am going to straight use this the um, glitter hero paste on the color layering, uh, not color layering. I'm so sorry, you guys. Um, the, pardon me. I can't even remember the names. There's so many new names, flower circle stencil and Daisy mosaic stencil. So I'm did this on a four by five and a quarter. So a slightly smaller panel of white cardstock. And I really wanted to show how even a tone on tone glittery textured background is really going to show off our color layering tulip and our color layering flowers and vase, which is what I wanted. I want those pieces to be the stars of the show. I die cut them with the coordinating dies. Once that glitter paste was completely dry, we're going to pop them up in the center of the card in real life. I don't know if it translates so great on camera, but in real life, the texture of the background is gorgeous and it really allows the florals to take the star of the show, which is what I want. Then I stamped greetings from both the flowers in vase stamp set, as well as the let's celebrate stamp set on smooth white cardstock using VersaFine Onyx black ink. I use the Simon Says stamp sentiment labels dies, my favorites, as you guys probably know, to die cut these into sentiment strips. You can also use a paper trimmer and then I'm simply going to pop them up on the card. Really, really clean and simple finishes to these two card designs. The tulips, I did two lines of text, happy birthday, another year older and another year wiser. For the flowers in vase, I'm going to use birthday wishes, but I am going to put a, a little red heart right underneath the vase or underneath the, the greeting on the vase to finish it off. I really like these finishes. I struggled a little bit trying to figure out how I wanted to finish these two cards. And I think showing how the glitter paste can be used directly on um, a solid color cardstock, no inking required to begin with, really shows just amazing texture and of course that beautiful glittery finish. I am adding a few heart accents to some of my other cards like the duckling card. And I'm trying to think if I added, oh, into the Sunflower and Bees card as well. I'm going to show you all of those. Let's do a little walkie walk through of all six cards. Again, just to show you uh, a sampling of what is included in the Hero Arts Spring 2022 catalog release. So this is all of my finished cards. There you can really see the texture. There you can see it on this one as well. Look at the glitter, you guys. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. And the duckling. 
I hope you guys have enjoyed this video featuring Hero Arts Spring 2022 catalog products. The supplies I used to create these cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my Patreon members. If you would like to become a member of Patreon, please click the link down in the description below. I would love to see you over there. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel click that like button and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new card making video. Here's another video featuring hero arts that you might be interested in. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.